you remember how I said that I had that I have like celiac disease or like gluten intolerance? You can't have gluten. I, one or the well, other. You can have gluten, but you'll be punished for it. Yes. So I was having a bunch of stomach problems. I went to the doctor. The problem is the doctor was not very specific about which one it was. When I when I got when I got the food allergen test done, he said you have celiac disease. And then a couple of minutes later, he said, "Well, I mean, it's it's a it's an intolerance to gluten." Okay. And then a couple of minutes later, he said, "But it but it's celiac disease." I'm not a medical expert, my guy, but it's got. I feel like it's one or the other because like celiac disease is your body just straight up will not let you process gluten, mm-hmm. and a gluten intolerance is that your body's just like, eh, I don't really like it that much. Okay. I've been eating gluten-free for a like, year at this point. Yeah, over once a you, year. Once you figured out that was your case. Been eating gluten-free for over a year. And yeah, my stomach improved a little bit, but like it still wasn't great. And recently I had a couple really bad stomach problems. And I was like, I have been eating gluten-free. What the hell is going on with my stomach? I was so I was thinking, like, I'll go get a food allergen test. And then I remembered that, oh yeah, I already had a food allergen test done at Veterans Affairs. I'll just go get a copy of that one because I could just go. To, I found out recently that I could just go to VA and be like, "Yo, give me my medical records," and they'll just give me records for whatever the hell I want. Yeah, I went and got a copy of my food allergen test because I was like, I, I wanted, I wanted to see if maybe there was something in there that I had missed, or that the doctor had missed. Sure, maybe you're allergic to a couple other things. Yeah, maybe I'm allergic to something else. Maybe it's, it's like whatever. You um, would hope that they would bring it up if that were the case, but maybe they overlooked. You it. would hope so, but it's VA. They're not great, and I know, I know the allergies can change. It still gives me a good basis for comparison. Um, basically, everything on here is less than 0. 0.10. So you're not allergic to anything else? Not really. I look at the one for wheat. It is 0. 0.22 kilo units per liter, I'm which not- is, on here, class 0 to 1. Clinical relevance undetermined. He saw that that number was slightly higher than the rest, and that was the, his best guess. I am not attributing any malice to this whatsoever. I'm just saying I would have preferred a slightly better explanation that, yeah, your tummy gets a little grumpy about wheat, but barely. Like, you'll have to eat an entire loaf of bread, and then you'll have other problems beyond the gluten intolerance. It mainly that you just ate an entire loaf of bread. What the hell is wrong with you? No, you have to be allergic to gluten because it, it's a recurring problem, and the whole thing with beer, that was foreshadowing. When I looked at that, I was like, what? Then what the hell is causing problems with my stomach? And then I realized that I have had a carbonated beverage or energy drink basically every single day. Furthermore, if I go to a restaurant and it has like a fountain drink machine and I get a soda from that, I almost immediately have stomach problems after eating. Mm. So I was like, I'm going to not have energy drinks for a few days and I'm not going to drink things with carbonation in it for a few days and see what happens. Okay. The first day I didn't have anything with carbonation in it, my stomach was completely fine. Like, immediately fixed. For the record, how much carbonated beverage did you consume daily prior to... At least one energy drink, and I would say once every other day I had, like, a soda. It doesn't seem like a lot. It seems like a fairly insignificant amount. It seems like a fairly insignificant amount, but I think my stomach really doesn't like carbonation. Hmm. All right. This is, this is the tentative thing we're going with, because the moment I stopped, my, my stomach was like, oh my god, this is great. This is, this is great now. <laughs> hey, you, you want to you eat half a pizza and not feel sick? <laughs> Do you want to eat half an actual pizza? Did like, you, actual gluten did pizza? You, did you actually eat a pizza to test it? I ate it? an entire pizza. And afterwards? And nothing happened. <laughs> Is this better or worse? You, I know you. This is way better because now I can eat bread. I ate, I ate four pretzel buns. I can have an actual bagel, soft, chewy bagel made out of wheat, not made out of rice. You don't have to get specialty pizzas that are flatter than the earth. It's like eating cardboard. The the, the specialty gluten free pizzas are not. There's a couple places that actually have really good gluten free pizzas, but it's just like I can have actual bread again. I can have actual bread now. And my stomach isn't just like, all right, all right, all right, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> I've been basically not having anything with carbonation in it. And it's been going stupidly well. And I wonder if I wonder if that's one of the reasons that I couldn't drink beer. Because it's so carbonated. My stomach was just like, oh my fucking god. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just like carbonation is not something that would show up on a food allergy test. Because it's not like they're taking your blood and putting it into a soda stream and carbonating it and see what happens. 
It's not like it's it's not like it's during the 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 hot wire scene of the thing where they t- they take a they take an eyedropper of Pepsi and they drip it on your blood and if your blood goes, <laughs> they're like, oh shit, he's got yeah. I guess there's no real way to test to see if you have a carbonation allergy. Just just experiment with not drinking carbonated beverages for a while. Yeah. The first day I didn't have an energy drink and then I didn't have a soda later and just immediate stomach relief. Maybe it's psychosomatic. Maybe. You, I, maybe. I, who fucking knows at this here's point? Here's my theory. Maybe you wanted to have bread so badly that your brain convinced itself it wasn't gluten intolerance. And to keep that deception alive, it had to not overreact. Yes, but then why does my food allergy test say that I'm not allergic to wheat? <laughs> because it was done by the VA. <laughs> They're incompetent at their job. Man, I don't get it. But my stomach has not been super mad at me. Hopefully, hopefully that will continue and I can continue eating gluten because I fucking love bread. I guess we'll keep on cycling through parts of your diet until we find the culprits. <sighs> yeah, whatever. Or I die. One or the other. What do you think made him say that you had to like, did, was it just desperate to get you? I don't know. That's what I, that's what I mean. I don't know if maybe the numbers were just so low, but he was like, why is he having these stomach problems? I don't know how to interpret these results. Maybe it's just something about the U.S. Army and VA where they just immediately want to put me on chemotherapy. I don't know. Maybe it's just maybe it's just the US military always wants to take the most drastic action in in trying to assist me in things humanly possible. What if the reason they're trying to prescribe all these extreme treatments is because they have a medical budget and they need to make sure they use all their procedures before the end of the fiscal year? Oh god, that wouldn't surprise me. The, the, and the other thing that's really confusing is like when I went to they said, oh, well, you have you have some type of gluten intolerance. So they sent me to go see a dietitian, and the dietitian was basically just like, yep, you have a gluten intolerance. Don't eat any food with gluten in it. On one hand, oh my gosh, I can't believe that they could get it so wrong. But on the other hand, it got you to leave them alone for two years, so maybe it was a success? Maybe, I don't know. Maybe it accomplished everything they wanted. Basically, the point I'm trying to get is don't drink Monster Energy drinks. That's or good do, advice I don't care. for you do, anyone. Do what you want. It might make you pee rocks, though. Is uh, Monster Energy Drink a culprit for that? There was a guy I was in Iraq with that would drink, I'm not even kidding, upwards of five Monster Energy Drinks a day. And he got kidney stones three times while we were in Iraq. Jeez. Uh, <laughs> like, what is wrong with you? I'm trying to get medevaced out of here. I had a kidney stone once. What? Uh, yeah, it was when I was at Fort Polk. I had a kidney stone. Jeez, I guess it is called by Energy Drinks. I wasn't really drinking that many energy drinks then. I don't know. I, pro- I may have been. I don't know. Whatever. But yeah, I had a kidney stone once. And uh, I, uh, that's the o- I think that's the only time I've ever passed out from pain in my entire life. Oh, damn. Yeah, that was, that was miserable. I wasn't happy about you that. wake up on the floor covered in your own urine? No, it was just like, it was, it, it, I hadn't passed it yet. It was just in there. Oh, and it was, it was so painful that I like, I basically just passed out. And then later, I passed it. It was miserable. Okay, I bet you were happy. Was it like the sensation after you pop a zit and you had this wave of relief? How do I how do I put it? How do I what's a good way to what's a good way to put it? It was like if you if you got beheaded by a guillotine, but then they put you back together. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, that sensation. Yeah, that's quite familiar. It was like it, it was. Oh god, man, it was fucking miserable i'm trying to think about i'm trying to think about how to describe it yeah it was it was an enormous sense of relief just like holy shit holy shit that's fucking done apparently it must not have been that bad because you haven't sworn off energy drinks or anything else i well i don't know maybe i was drinking a lot of energy drinks at the time i don't remember how i got that kidney stone it may have just been stressed i have no (laughs) clue what a surprise that would be what a surprise oh well you were stressed at fort polk what what a surprise Thank God that's over. Goes back to drinking the drink. Well, I mean, I didn't stop smoking, so. <laughs> well, you did after you coughed up a, a big old black chunk. People will only quit doing a thing when they want to quit doing that thing. That's why I usually tell people, like, interventions don't generally work. You, they, the person that, that, that is doing the thing has to want to quit. Right. That's really the only way that they get the motivation to do it. It's... Difficult to the point of almost impossible to guilt trip someone into quitting something. Well, that is, I guess, the point of an intervention. If it's done properly, it's not just a guilt trip. It's an actual talk. Yeah, but a lot of the times they're still not going to quit, though. Well, sometimes they do, and I guess that means that interventions are useful sometimes. Sometimes, but I don't know. Ever been to anyone else's intervention? No, I have not. It's awkward. 
I would assume so. I, I, I would not go because it would be too awkward. Hello, Mike. I see that you are friends with my son. Would you like to come over and be part of his intervention while I confront him about his drug use? Oh boy, that sounds fun. I'll be right over. <laughs> that sounds like a great Friday. And they didn't even have any appetizers. Nothing. I was just sitting there quietly. Lame. Do you remember in high school when you threw a pizza box into the ceiling fan? I did not do that. <laughs> Don't you pin that on me. Uh, I heard that Mike did it. I heard that Mike threw a pizza box into the ceiling fan, and it definitely wasn't anybody else. I wanted to share the pepperonis. Someone said I'm a big fan, and I had to make that a pun. I threw it into the ceiling fan. Uh, fan. No, it wasn't Mike. That threw it. <laughs> I uh, Probably Andrew. Yeah, I think it was Andrew. <laughs> Probably he was the kind of guy that did that. You know, I knew that kid since elementary school when he destroyed my snowman. That's mean. I don't know why I was friends with him after that. Oh boy, this guy interacted with me once. I don't know why I was friends with you after you tried to shove a broom in my butt. <laughs> Maybe you secretly liked it. No, I fucking didn't. <laughs> no, I, no, none of this victim blaming bullshit. No, I fucking didn't. <laughs> Mike was like, I saw them do this gag in an anime. I'm going to do it in real life. Only he did it with a broom. Yeah, instead of my fingers. I'm not going to stick my finger at your butt. Oh, that's weird, bro. <laughs> oh, good. Fucking God. Yeah.